I recently purchased an 8x8 RGB matrix to play with without really giving any real thought to the complexity necessary to control it. After receiving the matrix and examining the datasheet, I realized that there are 32 pins to control, 8 pins for the 8 common anodes, and 24 pins, 8 red, 8 green, and 8 blue for the 3 cathodes. With that many pins, 3 Maxim Max 2719 LED display driver ICs would definitely simplify things, but the problem is I don't have any Max 7219 chips and they're 5 bucks a piece. I'm way too cheap to spend another $15 on top of the $7 I already spent on the display, so I decided to see if I could build a circuit using only 8-bit latches and Darlington arrays. The design really isn't that difficult. It requires four 74HC595 latches and three ULN2803A 8-bit Darlington arrays. The design requires a lot of jumpers and a fair bit of breadboard real estate. 32 jumpers for the display itself, another 24 for the connections between the latches and the Darlington arrays, plus all of the other jumpers needed to supply power, ground, and hold various pins high or low for each IC. Over 70 jumpers in total, so be aware if you're going to build this project, you need to have a lot of jumpers on hand. Because this project involves so many connections and a considerable amount of breadboard real estate, I did something I don't usually bother with. I gave some thought to where I wanted to put the components on the breadboard. Now the 8x8 matrix is quite large and the two rows of pins are spaced too far apart to plug into a single solderless breadboard. I ended up spanning two breadboards with one row of pins plugged into each breadboard. This ultimately proved to work well, providing plenty of room on the breadboards for the support chips with the two boards still close enough together that any jumpers that needed to cross over reached without any problems. I'm going to provide a quick explanation of how the project works but I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time explaining the specifics of how an 8-bit latch functions. There's plenty of web pages, blogs, and YouTube videos available that do that already, and the focus of this video is on the project itself, controlling an 8x8 RGB matrix. As for the ULN2803A Darlington array, it's basically just an array of 8 NPN transistors in a single chip. The project would work just as well with 24 NPN transistors in place of the three ULN 2803s. Again, there's plenty of resources online if you're unfamiliar with the use of NPN transistors or Darlington arrays as current sinks. Here's a diagram of the project. Now, the project uses four 8-bit latches that are daisy-chained together to control the matrix. There is one latch uh, to control the x-axis of the matrix, shown here with the brown wires connected through current limiting resistors to the matrix, and then one latch each for each of the three colors. So we have one for red, one for green, and one for blue. Now the four latches are daisy chained together. The purple pin here is the data pin from the Arduino. It goes to the input from the input to the first latch, then the output from that is fed to the input for the red, the output from the red goes to the input from the green, the output from the green then goes to the input for the blue. Now to control the brightness of each pixel as it's displayed in each color, I'm using one of the PWM pins, the pulse width modulation pins on the Arduino, and it's connected to the input here on this first latch. Now the matrix is a common anode, which means there's a separate ground for each of the three colors. In order to connect the individual pins to ground, I use one of these Darlington arrays for each of the latches. So there is a Darlington array for the eight pins from the red, a Darlington array for the eight pins from the green, and a Darlington array for the eight pins from the blue. And you can see the connections from the output from each latch uh, shown here color-coded for easy identification. So all that the Arduino really has to do is send out four bytes of data for each pixel, one to turn on the x-axis, and then the, the second, third, or fourth byte controlling the individual color 
of the LED that's turned on and its brightness and it just cycles through each of the LEDs uh, individually by color and once it is updated in the entire matrix the matrix is shifted over the bitmaps shifted over by one row and the process is repeated now we'll take a look at the code that makes it all happen now the program that drives the project is divided into three sections aside from irregular constant and variable declarations which we'll come back to in a second uh, there are three sections the first being one that stores all of the bitmaps for each of the characters uh, in a table and it stores it in the Arduino's program memory space rather than operating RAM to conserve as much of the 2K RAM that you are so generously provided uh, on the Arduino. Now the program or the library that allows you to store constants in the program space does not apparently permit 64-bit unsigned integers. 32 is as large as they go, so I was forced to split each of the bitmaps into two 32-bit unsigned, so there's two 32-bit integers for each character stored. Each one is divided up into eight rows, so there's one 256-bit, there's a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, a seventh, and an eighth. So there's an 8x8 eight eight matrix of bits for each character stored in that table. The second, second section of the program takes the string that's going to be output, reads in the bitmaps for the characters used, and then stores them in an array so that the program can just parse through the array to display the scrolling data. And that's what the third section of the program does is displays the data that's been stored in that array. So back to the beginning here, basically there are some variable declarations and constants defined. These constants here are used by this shift out fast function that allows data to be sent out over the serial much faster than the standard shift out function which is necessary because of the large amount of data uh, that's being sent. Beyond that table, we have the array, which I called screen here, which is where the bitmap data will be stored after it's read, uh, the string is read, it's going to be displayed. Here is the 64-bit integer that each of the characters will be put back into as it's read out and stored in the array. Uh, declarations, again, of those pins for uh, serial communication. And pin 10, pin 10 which is the... Uh, PWM pin used to manipulate the brightness of each individual pixel. I have three arrays of bytes which are the 8x8 eight eight matrix for each of the three colors. That's where the data is actually stored before it's sent to the routine that displays it. These red, green, blue, RGB, lowercase here, those are used uh, by a, another routine that I've written that will cycle through the colors. It's uh, comment it out at the moment, but you could uncomment it and rather than have a randomly choose a color for the text It would cycle through the whole array of colors available This LED PX and PY they're used by the function that displays the bitmap down at the end of the program I'll get to that back in a second the scroll speed This constant defines how quickly the text scrolls by the display string is used to store the text that's going to be displayed or is going to scroll by. There's an index used uh, for the font array because my font array does not start at, at uh, 32. It starts at 0 because there's a bunch of undisplayable characters that I had no need for. Array length gets started offset by 7 because you have to have seven spaces at the beginning of the string so the text starts on the right hand side and scrolls to the left with some blank space and this byte red variable is used to grab an individual column of bitmap data from the font array this will all make more sense when we get into the nuts and bolts of the code 
So in the setup function, I basically define those three serial output pins. This line here actually sets the PWM frequency to the highest frequency available. Uh, the high frequency is necessary because the pins are lit for such a short time that unless a high frequency is used, you get irregular lighting on each individual pixel. Now, this section of code may not even be necessary, but I included it anyway. It basically zeroes out the matrix and then clears all of the pixels that might be on the screen before the program starts. Now, this is the second section of the program that I spoke of right here. This is the section that actually takes the string that's stored in display string, looks up the individual character bitmap out of that table that's stored in program memory and then combines it back into a 64-bit long and then it repeatedly ands uh, with 255 so it gets one byte of that long integer and stores it into the matrix that's going to be displayed until the whole entire array is filled up with the string uh, of bitmaps that are going to be displayed. So once that's happened, then we get into the real looping nuts and bolts part of the program here. I have set R, G, and B to random colors. And starting at the beginning of the string, it'll store the current 8x8 matrix with the bitmap to be displayed out of that screen array. You can see here where it stored it into screen. And then once it's stored in 8x8, then it calls update shift registers, which cycles through each individual pixel, and turns on the red at the specified brightness using that PWM pin if it's on, the green if it's on, and the blue if it's on. Now, if the pin is not on, or the, that pixel's not on, I added a timing delay in here to prevent the empty spaces between the characters scrolling by faster than when it was had pixels that needed to be turned on. Now you can see I call this shift out fast function down here which is what I spoke of earlier about directly addressing the serial communication pins. Uh, so it's much much faster than the built-in uh, shift out function uh, unless you use a function like this with that much data to be sent, you get a terrible scroll speed and flashing, and it's just unacceptable. So that's all there is to the program. It just cycles through that entire string that's or an entire array that's stored in the array called screen until it reaches the end. And when it reaches the end, it loops back to the beginning and it starts displaying the matrix again. So now here's a quick uh, follow-up demonstration of the output from the program and the hardware in action. And of course, as always, uh, if you found this of value, I would encourage you to uh, click like and subscribe if you're interested. I always uh, appreciate any encouragement that I can get and I would definitely need the encouragement to continue with this and demonstrate more capabilities of the Arduino and its hardware. And uh, thank you all for watching, and until next time.